from this to this. And a confidential discussion about this. I've always been attracted to little containers and boxes and uh, today I'm going to show you how to make this one here. Uh, but we've got several little things around the house, little boxes and uh, little things like this uh, here and there. They don't serve any specific purpose. It's not like we have rare spices in them or anything like that. Uh, more likely, uh, you know, I call them uh, crap catchers. Uh, you know, Karen will be straightening up around the house and she'll find some little screw or some bit or piece and she'll always bring it over. She, Do you know what this is from, honey? And I'll look at it and say, no, I sure don't have any idea. And so, you know, she'll open up one of these and drop it in there. And then, you know, with the thought that someday we'll figure out what that little bit or piece is and marry it up again. But it never happens. Karen is out for the evening, so I thought I would just share this. She'll never look at this video, so I think I'm okay. Here's one of our treasures of our house. My mom made this and gave it to us in 1981. And it's, so it's a, it's a rare family heirloom. But it's also one of our oldest crap catchers. So let's just see what my wife has put in here. All right, what do we have? All right, we've got some matches. A little frog thing. Oh, look at that. It's a temple bar for some glasses. A receipt. Some buttons. Oh, look at that. It's a war nickel. I think those are worth like 12 or 13 cents. There's a dolly shoe. Some kind of an eraser. Oh, look, it's a flosser. Some pennies. Balderdash game card. So there you have it. This is what becomes of lidded boxes and canisters at my house. If you've watched this segment of my video, then I'm asking you to take a vow of silence. My sweet wife must never know that I've exposed her to the world. In the area of wood turning, I've been inclined to grab a hunk of wood and throw it on the lathe and see what I can get out of it. I might have some rough idea of what I want to do, uh, but uh, this one I actually put a little bit of thought into and I thought I'd make a canister out of this. I've got a plastic bucket full of blocks, building blocks. These are old ones from a child's playground somewhere. And uh, nice wood. I've cut this stuff before for different uh, reasons, and it really has a nice grain to it. I don't know what, it, what in the heck it is. It, it has a soft feel, and it cuts nicely, but it has a very tight grain to it. So what I'm going to do with this is uh, I'm going to make this a lidded box and uh, the dots here I've laid out and uh, I got my plug cutter here and I've uh, been having my way with uh, some scraps of mahogany and black walnut. So I've got uh, several little plugs cut here that'll be dots, they'll be decorative little dots on here. And I've got this laid out, uh, the larger ones are half inch, the medium sized ones are three eighths of an inch and then these little guys are uh, quarter inch. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna where, which ones I'm going to put where just yet. I may put the smaller ones up top and the larger ones on the bottom. I don't know. We'll see. It just depends on how I feel when I get to the drill press. I'll turn this between centers. I've left some room this time uh, to cut my tenons. I've also laid out a place where I plan to cut this uh, here. So I've got my kerf, if you will, at this point, and then this little area here uh, will uh, be the uh, the register for the top. So I've actually put a little bit of thought into this one and I hope this one goes better than the others. Well, I decided to go half inch, three eighths, and quarter. So I'm just drilling these holes out here. All right, the fit up looks pretty good on the three eighths inch size here. It's a little bit loose on the half inch. I'm a little disappointed there. So I'm probably going to add a little sawdust there just to tighten that up some. But we'll go ahead and glue these up. Three eighths are really a nice tight fit. There's only one that's just the teensiest bit loose. All right, I'll let this thing dry through the night. And I uh, just had some really small gaps between uh, these little 
uh, plugs here and uh, the hole so I used some CA and a little sawdust to try to shore that up and I sanded it uh, down to where these are fairly flush so all I'm going to do is uh, turn this thing flat I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut my tenons so that I can when I cut this thing in half I'll be able to uh, support the two sides in, in the Nova G3 and then I'll smooth off the outside here and for the top I'll probably go ahead and round it over. My, my plan is to have that be kind of a quarter round, if you will. That looks pretty good. Okay, um, I parted the uh, top off of this and uh, I've got the bottom here, uh, I've got the tenon into the G3 chuck and I've got a Forstner bit and I'm going to start off with about a 7 8 and I'm going to take it up in about 3 8 diameter increments uh, to uh, go ahead and bore this thing out and then we'll come back and do the top. One thing I've learned is that uh, Boy, the bit sure does get hot. So um, I will bring it. I bring a cup of water over here, and uh, every 10 or 15 seconds of turning, I'll stop and cool the bit off. Good. Alright, I've got the bottom flipped around here and uh, got it supported from the inside and uh, so what I'm going to do here is I've got the live center on this to support it while I turn down this tenon and I'll hollow out the bottom just a little bit here and then uh, I'll take the live center away and finish. Beautiful. It's a new day. Uh, yesterday we finished the bottom of this, got it sanded out, and it really turned out nice. Very happy with this. So I've got the uh, top in the Nova G3, and I'm just going to go ahead and hollow that out and uh, fit the top so that it'll snugly fit onto the bottom. And I'll just be doing this with my cutting tools. No Forstners for this. I like it, and even the grains match up decent on the inside of this, and, and uh, we'll get that, that tenon off of there. Okay, I've got my bottom held in place, so uh, just a little pressure from this disc here on a live center, and I'm just going to go ahead and polish this out. Now it's been waxed a couple of times. All right, we'll go ahead and put the finial in and sign her and we'll call it done. Okay, the uh, finish looks pretty good. It's got a few little sanding marks, but I think when I put the uh, wax on there, those will disappear. All right, the glue is dry. I waxed it and this should be the final polish on this. And I'm ready to examine the final product. Well, we started out with one of these. This is a block from a kitty uh, set of blocks. I don't know, it probably came from a school or a playground. I bought this thing at a flea market, a whole bucket full of these really nice little blocks. They're very clear, clean, tight grain little pieces of wood, stuff you can't get at the big box uh, hardware stores. Uh, turned really nice, uh, really a great wood on the lathe, tight, tight uh, grain, but not too hard. And boy, it sure did turn into a pretty piece at the end here. 
Uh, very happy with how this came out. Uh, I love these little dowel inserts. I think they're they're really nice. Uh, they they uh, come all the way through to the inside there, and I think that looks kind of cool. So we'll add this to the collection of uh, canisters or lidded box thingies that we've made here. I've probably got about a half a dozen of them on hand now. So we are just about set for the holidays, and if you're a friend or a family member, I'll just tell you that you can run, but you can't hide. You're getting one of my canisters. Anyway, this is Jimmy saying thanks for watching. I sure hope you'll leave a comment and a like, and of course, uh, if you're not a subscriber, I sure hope you'll become a subscriber. Have a good day.